Hi friends, Phoebe Trotman here. Welcome to another edition of Burst of Brilliance. Meet the contributors from Never Quit on a Bad Day. Super thrilled if you've been tuning in every day. We've had a chance to meet the incredible contributors who I'm just so grateful to everyone for taking time out to share in this book and to you guys for taking for reading it. The reviews have been incredible and the feedback and we're just we're really looking forward to sharing more with um, my good friend Simon Chan and Simon is chapter 9 in Never Quit on a bad day. And Simon, I just want to say first and foremost, thank you so much for contributing to this book. Um, I've looked up to you for many, many years. I remember when I first came across uh, your podcast and I was just like every single day listening to an episode and just taking notes. And I've learned so much from you and the incredible guests that you've had on. And so I just want to say thank you for sharing because your chapter is connected with a lot of people and uh, you're just doing some amazing things and changing lives with your mentorship, your coaching, your book as well too. And so thank you for saying yes. And I have to ask you, why did you say yes? Well, first of all, thank you for being a fan of ML Nation. And thank you for contributing um, to an episode. I still remember when we did that. I still also remember when we met up in Vancouver yep. when I was visiting um, with my wife and her family. Um, so why did I contribute? Um, because I think it goes back to one of my philosophies. Like, you know, purpose is greater than money, right? Um my purpose, God's purpose for me is to have a positive. So two reasons to that. Number one is God's purpose for me after we're purpose-driven life way back in 2003 is to have a positive impact as many lives as possible. That guided me into the direct selling profession because that's a uh, profession where it's not just about making sales, but really making a huge impact. One person can make a huge, through the level of duplication, can make a huge impact on tens of thousands and eventually build a team of over 300,000 people. So that's number one, like, so if I can make a positive impact, so why not, right? Um, then I'll give you actually three reasons. Second reason is because I believe like, you know, the more you give, the more it comes back to you, right? But you got to give with a heart that you don't want anything back. So the more you give without wanting anything back, it'll come back. So I write this book and I, you know what? I may never make a penny from it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just, it feels good to give and make an impact, right? Um, the more... And, they have done studies where the people who are the biggest philanthropists, they're often the wealthiest people. And but they give, like they talk about Bill Gates, they give, but not with intention to get back. But once you have the intention, like I want to make money from it, then you never get anything. And I think throughout the 20 something years, uh, my parents were like rags to riches, very successful. They were also very, very generous, very big givers. I learned a lot from that. Uh, my late grandparents, who I was very, very close to, because even though my parents, um, especially my dad was financially successful. He was in that, um, what you call it, the quadrant, the rat race. Like he, he was a doctor, you know, financially successful, but never had much time with us, right? So I actually spent a lot of time with my grandparents. And I love my late grandparents. They were kind of like my real uh, parents in many ways, but they didn't really have that giving attitude. And I saw them that they could have been a lot happier than they were actually were. So, that's a long, long answer. The third reason why I never quit on the bad day is that that's just one of the keys to success, right? That's one of the keys to success in anything. You know, well, before we hop down, we talk about baseball. Uh, I just came from a baseball tournament. I'm still like sweating right now, but for my son. But it's like, you're all going to have bad days, but the key to stay, keep going is what's going to help you become successful. Um, I was just talking to one of my best friends. You know, we went to Stanford baseball camp. Um, in the middle of the week last week, met up with my best friends. He was like my best man at my wedding and talked about, you know, I went to a pretty prestigious university and I, I didn't learn much there. I wasn't a good student. But one thing I did learn that made the, well, the two things I got out of that was number one was I, uh, the friends. I was always the dumbest kid uh, among my friends. I, I made the least amount of money and just being around that atmosphere. Like I had a friend that was making a million dollars already by 25. I made me feel stupid, right? That motivated me. There's always saying that you want the, you're the average of the five uh, people that you spend the most time with. And I was always the lowest income. So that pushed me, pulled me. I didn't want to do finance. I didn't want to be a lawyer and work those long hours, but I wanted to make a big in network marketing. So that was, and the other thing I learned from college was just like, you know, that got me to where I was, wasn't anything. I didn't learn anything from the classes, but not quitting, not quitting. And uh, I wasn't the best student. I don't, I'm not going to say this too loud because my boys are here, but I would cut class and then I would have like 10 chapters to study. And we're not talking about like 
fun, not talking about like never reading, never quit on the bad day books, but reading about engineering dynamics, you know, uh, engineering mechanics, calculus three. And I was like, oh, this sucks. I'm miserable. I hate it. And I wouldn't sleep much. I'll stay in the library. I'll be like, I'll never do this again. But it doesn't matter how miserable I was. I never quit. And I think that actually may help me uh, way more than I realized later on in my life. Because I realized as I work with different people in inside and outside the profession, a lot of people quit once there's adversity. Right. And you see sometimes parents let the kids get away with stuff like, no, that kid's almost doomed for failure. If you let the kid get away with that, um, you're not. And that's, that's like the way I raised my boys is like, especially with sports, doesn't matter how bad it is, you're not quitting. And, and it's, it's real resulted in a lot of meltdowns. Much, but you know what? It's for your own good. Because I've mm-hmm. seen so many people, they quit when they have something, they, they, they quit. Don't, they, I don't want to do this anymore. No. Like, especially in baseball, you, you had five bad swings in practice. You're not going back to take a break. No, you can suck it up and go there because that's what life is about. You're going to get hit left and right. You, people are going to say no. People are going to return products. Customers are going to cancel. Your friends that are going to join are not going to join. The people that are going to be, build your team, they don't. But, but that's what every leader goes through. But you don't quit. And I love to say never quit on the bad day because eventually there is a time to quit and retire, but on your terms, not mm-hmm. on the bad day. Anyway, that's a long, long question. I just love giving no, back. That's, so, that's love, great. This is why it's, but Simon, this is why it's called Burst of Brilliance because you just shared so many gems and wisdom in what you're sharing with your answers. And that's why I've loved having these uh, short chances to, to chat with all the contributors because there's so many gems of wisdom. And you guys, if you're watching live, I should have said this earlier, if you're watching live, drop a one, let us know where you're listening in from. If you're watching the replay, drop a two where you're listening in from and share. What is some of the gems of wisdom that you're getting from Simon? Comment below and share as well with those. So Simon, let me ask you this. What are your overall thoughts about the book? That's awesome because I think everyone has a different journey to success. I was a shy, quiet Asian kid grew in Brooklyn, New York, you know, went to a prestigious university, but just had a low paying job. Uh, my temptation to quit was different. I like expanded to new markets. I thought it was going to be easy. It w- went to a hundred times harder than it was. I was going to almost lost my business because of that. Um, but then you have other people, but I didn't quit. Right? Mm-hmm. And then there's other people who are totally different ethnicity, totally different background, and went through a different challenge, but they made it. But I think mm-hmm. so. It's, I think it's very inspira- inspiration. I wish I had a book like that when I first started, is because you can see it doesn't matter what race, what ethnicity, what country you live in, or what company, what service, where you're selling, whatever. The situations can be different, but the one thing that never, that's always constant, is the mental toughness and never quit on a bad day. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that. And one of the visions with this book is that it is for everyone, because as you know, like in life, whether you are in sports, you're a parent, you're an entrepreneur, you work at a job, you're st- it doesn't matter. We're all going to go through bumps in the road. And really the vision for this book is to build that mental toughness and resilience through those exercises. And even though the stories are all different, the lessons that everyone can learn from it, it applies to everyone and at any stage in your life as well, too. And so it's been fun, even when um, asking everyone who contributed their questions and everybody came back with different, because everyone has a different journey and, and the yeah. commonality with everything is they didn't quit, they kept going. And so let me ask you this, Simon, if you are having a rough moment, let's just say it's not one of those bad days, but it's just like a rough moment. Is there anything that you do to just shift your state? Like, do you listen to music or work out? Or is there anything that you do to change your state? There's a lot of things. Um, well, obviously, like working out, going for a jog always makes you feel better, right? Exercise. But before you even go there, you have to – it's it's a self-talk, right, that I'm going to do this. Like most people, they struggle and fail because they give themselves reasons why they can't do it, mm-hmm. right? Uh, it's too hard. I'm too old. I'm not good looking enough. I'm too young. Or this person will never listen to me because I'm half their age or – or maybe I'm too old. This person can't really. They all go give reasons why I'm not. I'm not tech savvy. I'm not good with the phone. I'm not do, all reasons why I'm not a good speaker. I'm shy. I don't know many people. So the first thing is you have to say, "Hey, I am not the person that quits. I'm tough. I'm mentally tough." And then you give reasons why you're mentally tough, mm-hmm. right? Now maybe you are tough in sports. I know you are super tough in sports. Maybe you come up with reasons why. Now if you don't have something in the past, a reason why, then Know that you can create that reason why, why, why you're tough just at this moment to keep going, right? 
So know that at every second you can change course. It's just like, you know, people who are on the diet, they eat bad for one day. Hey, you're only just one decision away from getting back on track. Instead of worrying about, oh, I screwed up again. This doesn't work. I missed the workout. Hey, you're just one action right now to getting right back on track, right? So you, you're tough. You're not mentally tough. You're going through a tough time. Hey, you're just one action, one thought right now. Just keep going. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Second thing is I always envision, um, I ask myself two, two questions. Like, what would my mentor do? What is someone that I look up to? What would they do? Mm, that's right? powerful. And, and then the third thing is like, if someone that looked up to me was watching me, what would I do? Ooh, right? I so if I, in, uh, when I was younger, it was my downline. So a couple of people looked up to me because I in, in, it was like, oh my goodness, little did they know how messed up I am. But if they're watching me right now, what would I do? Or mm-hmm. even now become my kids. My kids watch me, what, watch me, what would I do? So that really helps me during the challenging moments. I love that. That is absolutely brilliant, you guys. Drop that down in the comments below. Think about that, that when you're going through that tough time or you're tempted to quit, if someone that looks up to you, if they were watching you, what would your action be? And I love what you said, Simon, one decision away, because it's true. We're only one decision away from getting back on course. And we know there's going to be setbacks in life in anything, whatever you're doing when you're pursuing a goal, there's going to be bumps in the road. Just get back on track, make that decision. Sorry, you're going to say something? Yeah. And then there's a couple of sayings I always say to myself, like tough times, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Mm-hmm. So I am tough. I'm going to make this happen. Right. And then I, I was just sharing the, this is my second son. But, you know, he just won some type of championship and stuff. But some kids are mentally weaker. I say, why are they weaker? Oh, he was, he was asking about diamonds. Dude. He won a ring. So, is this a real diamond ring, like a baseball ring? No, that's not made of real diamonds. Like, well, <laughs> and then I shared with him, how are diamonds made? Like, di- why are diamonds so expensive? I was like, well, if that was a real diamond, that would be like a $100,000 ring. You definitely didn't get a $100,000 ring. So he's like, asked me, what makes diamonds so valuable? Because diamonds are tough. You, you can't scratch it. You take a knife, you try to scratch it, it's not going to scratch. Is it really? Yeah, you take a knife and scratch, scratch it. It's not going to scratch. And I said, well, and then he said, well, you know what, pencil. What's a pencil? Uh, you know, is a, a pencil strong where you can break it easily? Well, of course, I can smash my pencil. But did you know diamonds are made of the same thing as pencils, carbon? But the mm-hmm. difference is diamonds went through, how are diamonds made? Through millions of years of pressure. And that's mm-hmm. why they're tough. And I would say that's, that's something I remind myself is during these tough times, I'm becoming a stronger diamond. I'm becoming a better leader because it's the tough times that creates the future leaders. Absolutely. There's brilliance, brilliance. Love it, Simon. Okay, so let me ask you this. If you could, knowing what you know now, if you could talk to Simon 20 years ago or some of our viewers and listeners who are in the younger generation, what piece of advice would you give them? Anything you want to share to younger Simon or anyone else who's watching that's in that kind of younger generation? I used to always be worried about what other people think. And then I learned this quote. I, I wish I knew this earlier. It said, when you're 20, you worry about what people think. When you're 40, you don't care what people think. And then when you're 80, you finally realize that no one was thinking about you. Wow. It is wow. not so true. Mm -hmm. So true. That's brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. So you guys, you're watching, can you see now why I asked Simon to be in the book? Simon, you just are a wealth of knowledge and inspiration. And I just absolutely adore you and everything that you're doing. I love how you lead because you lead truly by example uh, with everything that you're doing to change lives and impact people literally all over the world. So we're going to wrap up with a fun little game. So I'm going to get my timer out. So we're going to do a one minute ish game of either lightning or hot potato. So here's how this is going to work, Simon. I'm going to flip a coin. You call heads or tails. Depending what it lands on, if it's on heads, we're going to play lightning where I just fire quick, random, short, one answer, whatever pops in my head type of questions. Uh, If it lands on tails, then we're going to play hot potato where I ask you a question, you answer, and then you get to ask me one back. Okay. So here we go. All right. I've never done this before, but it sounds fun. Yeah. Like, okay. So heads or tails? Heads. Heads. There you go. It's heads. So we're going to play. Okay. Which means I just get to fire questions at you, whatever pops in my head. So I'm going to get my timer on. Here we go. And first question, are you a morning person or a night owl? Morning, early morning. Okay. Favorite vacation spot? Bora Bora. We got to talk about that after. Okay. Uh, Coffee or tea? Tea. Favorite food? Sushi. Ooh, what kind of sushi? 
What do you have a yellowtail sashimi? Oh, nice, nice. In Vancouver, nice. which is awesome. Very good. Good plug in there, Simon. I love it. Um, favorite animal? I gotta say Bichon Frise, my oldest son. Okay. Oh, Bichon Frise. Okay, cool. Uh Beecher Mountains. Tough one. Um even I've never really been to the mountains. I'll say mountain because I've been mountain. to the beach too often. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Um, let's see. Do, 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 uh, New York or LA? LA. Yeah, I gave you an easy one there. Um, favorite pizza topping? Spinach. Wow, interesting. That's your garlic. Garlic, love garlic. Spin spinach, mushroom, garlic would be perfect. Okay, favorite food to make? Oh, I don't really cook. So, uh, and I this this may sound weird. Uh, I don't eat red meat. I haven't eaten red meat for like 15, 16 years, but it would be making steak for my boys. Okay, nice. Um, last question. We'll go with um, mm, favorite flavor of ice cream. Mint chocolate chip. Nice. Awesome. Simon, thank you, my friend, for being on here and playing a fun that was fun to wrap it up. So you guys, as you know, never quit on a bad day. You can go to the website. You can sign up. You can get a free preview chapter. Join the community. Also, the book is available now on Amazon. So you can go to Amazon, grab your own copy of it, and just join our community. So we are a Facebook page. And what I'm encouraging people to do is be bold with your goals. So take a picture with the book and post what is one of your goals that you're going after, whether it's right now, a short-term goal, long-term goal, so we can cheer you on as well. Instagram. We're on Instagram as well. So you can like and follow us. And the same thing, if you do a post with your goal, tag us in the post. Every month, we're going to do a shout out for our never quit a de bad day fan enthusiast of the month. And we're just going to highlight them and, and show some love on them as well, too. So thank hey, you. I, I want to I add yeah. something. You know, Absolutely. everyone who gets the book, everyone who gets the book should definitely take a picture of the book and post it on there. And you're doing it not for Phoebe or anyone. Uh, yeah, yes, you are. But more important, you're doing it for yourself. Because people out there, your friends who are not near watching you. So they're like, what the heck are you reading? Never quit on the bad day. That doesn't make sense. What is it? What is this? What? It creates curiosity. And when you create, because I always talk about it, that people buy your change, your commitment, and your consistency. And when you have a change, right? Like, if, like for example, when I was, I used to just read, just watch sports and read sports. I'm posting a book and never quit on the bad day. People are like, Simon, what is that? Why are you posting stuff about a book? That creates, uh, you know, curiosity, and that eventually leads to conversations, and that conversations lead to potential prospects and to business partners. So make sure you do that because people are watching you, and it starts a conversation, and then afterwards you can talk about how exciting the new journey, whatever, whatever you're doing. So make sure you do that. I love that. Thank you, Simon. And yeah, and part of my vision is just think about what kind of community we'll all live in when people go after their goals, whatever those goals are, whatever those yeah. dreams are, and just how much it inspires someone else to pursue their goals and dreams as well, too. So Simon, my friend, thank you so much for contributing. Thank you for being the incredible human that you are. I'm definitely a better person because I have you in my life. So thank you, my friend, for being on our burst of brilliance, meet the contributors, little fun session today. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you for having me here. And everyone, uh, go get that book, read it. Let me us know and comment below. If you have any questions, you can follow me on social media. And remember, never quit on a bad day. Instead, go out there and have a positive impact on someone's life. God bless you all. Thanks, Phoebe. Thanks.